Judges chapter 16. Once Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute, and went in to her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they circled around and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They kept quiet all night, thinking, Let us wait until the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay only until midnight. Then at midnight he rose up, took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two posts, pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders, and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Philistines came to her and said to her, Coax him and find out what makes his strength so great, and how we may overpower him, so that we may bind him in order to subdue him, and we will each give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes your strength so great and how you could be bound so that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that are not dried out, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. Then the lords of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not dried out, and she bound him with them. While men were lying in wait in an inner chamber, she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a strand of fiber snaps when it touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you could be bound. He said to her, If they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. The men lying in wait were in an inner chamber, but he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you could be bound. He said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head with the web and make it tight with the pen, then I shall become weak and be like anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web and made them tight with the pen. Then she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pen, the loom, and the web. Then she said to him, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me three times now, and have not told me what makes your strength so great. Finally, after she had nagged him with her words day after day, and pestered him, he was tired to death. So he told her his whole secret, and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, then my strength would leave me. I would become weak and be like anyone else. When Delilah realized that he had told her his whole secret, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, This time come up, for he has told his whole secret to me. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She let him fall asleep on her lap, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. He began to weaken, and his strength left him. Then she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. When he awoke from his sleep, he thought, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. So the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles, and he ground at the meal in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. 
Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to their god Dagon, and to rejoice, for they said, Our god has given Samson our enemy into our hand. When the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. And when their hearts were merry, they said, Call Samson, and let him entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. They made him stand between the pillars, and Samson said to the attendant who held him by the hand, Let me fill the pillars on which the house rests, so that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there. And on the roof there were about three thousand men and women, who looked on while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, Lord God, remember me and strengthen me only this once, O God, so that with this one act of revenge I may pay back the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He strained with all his might, and the house fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So those he killed at his death were more than those he had killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtaol, in the tomb of his father Manoah. He had judged Israel twenty years. Judges chapter 17 There was a man in the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Micah. He said to his mother, The eleven hundred pieces of silver that were taken from you, about which you uttered a curse and even spoke it in my hearing, that silver is in my possession. I took it. But now I will return it to you. And his mother said, May my son be blessed by the Lord. Then he returned the eleven hundred pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I consecrate the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son, to make an idol of cast metal. So when he returned the money to his mother, his mother took two hundred pieces of silver and gave it to the silversmith who made it into an idol of cast metal, and it was in the house of Micah. This man Micah had a shrine, and he made an ephod and teraphim, and installed one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. Now there was a young man of Bethlehem in Judah, of the clan of Judah, He was a Levite residing there. This man left the town of Bethlehem in Judah to live wherever he could find a place. He came to the house of Micah in the hill country of Ephraim to carry on his work. Micah said to him, From where do you come? He replied, I am a Levite of Bethlehem in Judah, and I am going to live wherever I can find a place. Then Micah said to him, Stay with me, and be to me a father and a priest, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, a set of clothes, and your living. The Levite agreed to stay with the man, and the young man became to him like one of his sons. So Micah installed the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me, because the Levite has become my priest. Judges chapter 18 In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites was seeking for itself a territory to live in, for until then no territory among the tribes of Israel had been allotted to them. So the Danites sent five valiant men from the whole number of their clan, from Zorah and from Eshtaol, to spy out the land and to explore it. And they said to them, Go, explore the land. When they came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they stayed there. 
While they were at Micah's house, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. So they went over and asked him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business here? He said to them, Micah did such and such for me, and he hired me, and I have become his priest. Then they said to him, Inquire of God that we may know whether the mission we are undertaking will succeed. The priest replied, Go in peace. The mission you are on is under the eye of the Lord. The five men went on, and when they came to Laish, they observed the people who were there living securely, after the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and unsuspecting, lacking nothing on earth, and possessing wealth. Furthermore, they were far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with Aram. When they came to their kinsfolk at Zorah and Eshtaol, they said to them, What do you report? They said, Come, let us go up against them, for we have seen the land, and it is very good. Will you do nothing? Do not be slow to go, but enter in and possess the land. When you go, you will come to an unsuspecting people. The land is broad. God has indeed given it into your hands a place where there is no lack of anything on earth. Six hundred men of the Danite clan, armed with weapons of war, set out from Zorah and Eshtaol, and went up and encamped at Kiriath-Jerim in Judah. On this account, that place is called Mahana Dan to this day. It is west of Kiriath-Jerim. From there they passed on to the hill country of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. Then the five men who had gone to spy out the land, that is, Laish, said to their comrades, Do you know that in these buildings there are an ephod, teraphim, and an idol of cast metal? Now, therefore, consider what you will do. So they turned in that direction and came to the house of the young Levite at the home of Micah and greeted him. While the six hundred men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood by the entrance of the gate. The five men who had gone to spy out the land proceeded to enter and take the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim. The priest was standing by the entrance of the gate with the six hundred men armed with weapons of war. When the men went into Micah's house and took the idol of cast metal, the ephod, and the teraphim, the priest said to them, What are you doing? They said to him, Keep quiet. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be priest to the house of one person, or to be priest to a tribe and clan in Israel? Then the priest accepted the offer. He took the ephod, the teraphim, and the idol, and went along with the people. So they resumed their journey putting the little ones, the livestock, and the goods in front of them. When they were some distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, and they overtook the Danites. They shouted to the Danites, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter that you come with such a company? He replied, You take my gods that I made, and the priest, and go away, and what have I left? How then can you ask me, what is the matter? And the Danites said to him, You had better not let your voice be heard among us, or else hot-tempered fellows will attack you, and you will lose your life and the lives of your household. Then the Danites went their way. When Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. The Danites, having taken what Micah had made, and the priest who belonged to him, came to Laish, to a people quiet and unsuspecting, put them to the sword, and burned down the city. There was no deliverer, because it was far from Sidon, and they had no dealings with Aram. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob. They rebuilt the city and lived in it. They named the city Dan, after their ancestor Dan who was born to Israel, but the name of the city was formerly Laish. 
Then the Danites set up the idol for themselves. Jonathan, son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the time the land went into captivity. So they maintained as their own Micah's idol that he had made, as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. 